So far, I have been using the Arduino programming language or the firmware on, say, three different types of microcontrollers, uh, starting with uh, the quintessential Arduino Uno with Atmega 328P or uh, with ESP8266 microcontroller with uh, the Wi-Fi on board on the VMOS development board, as well as the NRF52 blow for Bluetooth low energy uh, provided by Adafruit Featherboard. If we come to the other types of Arduino boards, we will see that there are really many, many other types. And uh, most of them are actually Atmega 328P. So if you kind of search for Atmega, you see that there is 32U4 and of course there's 328P and others. Now, until recently, I did not find the need uh, to go into other kinds of microcontrollers, but for my current project, I needed three features, uh, specifically more storage, and uh, secondly, I wanted to play with web USB, and thirdly, I really, really needed an internal interrupt to have a periodic wake up. Now, yes, I could have used the ESP8266 or the NRF52, but I did not require a Bluetooth low energy or a Wi-Fi. And that's why it made me uh, explore other kinds of microcontrollers uh, which are compatible with the Arduino firmware. And uh, guess what? I actually found at, uh, at SAMD21 which is on board Arduino Zero. So for this, I actually uh, bought a Robotine uh, development board uh, containing the Sam D21 microcontroller M0 Mini. So it looks a lot like this, very tiny as well. It's by Robotine. And uh, I had uh, quite a little bit of fun discovering the differences between Atmega 328P and Sam D21. So for this, I have a very, very simple blinky LED. All it does is uh, it lets the LED built in on board Arduino Uno and it just toggles it to high and low every one second. So let me just flash the firmware inside. And if I connect to the serial, you can see that it is actually printing high and low. So that was pretty easy. I mean, that's something we do all the time. Why don't we do the same thing on SAMD21 board? So here I have the exact same code of a blinky LED, but this time I am going to flash in this firmware into a SAM D21 microcontroller. So let me do that. And let me connect to the serial. And here we will see that nothing is being printed out. And this is the first thing that I noticed. And the answer lies in the serial API, actually. So the Arduino Uno, uh, when we say serial, it is actually connecting to the UART. Whereas for zero, we need to use serial USB so that it can use the native USB port. So what I'm going to do is go back to the firmware and I'm going to replace all the serial with the serial USB replace all and uh, just here as well. And let's try to flash that in again. And now when we connect, we see that it is printing and out. So for a SAM D21, be sure to use serial USB API if you want to connect uh, to the serial USB native port. Next, let's uh, compare the flash storage, which I required quite a bit for my current project. If we compare the Arduino Uno with Zero and uh, compare the EEPROM versus Flash, we will see that uh, uh, for Flash, the SAMD21 has 256 kilobyte, whereas the Arduino Uno has one kilobyte. It's almost 200 times more storage. So if you have a project that you need quite a bit of storage, SAMD21 might be it. For Atmega 328P, we are gonna use the native EEPROM library. And why don't we go ahead and try to store some text. I'm gonna take maybe the first paragraph from uh, Nikola Tesla's autobiography, chapter four. And uh, let me create a .h file and let me try to store all of this. 
Now, for my firmware, all it's trying to do is basically read and write using the EEPROM API that I had into each address. So every character into each address. It's uh, really simple. I'm just following the API. Now, if we try to flash in the software, uh, we will see that it will immediately say not enough memory. Why don't we go ahead just uh, have just one sentence inside and let's see whether we can flash in again. All right, so it is possible right now like by drastically reducing it. Now, all I'm gonna do is print this sentence about 10 times and uh, let's see what happens. So I'm gonna connect and uh, it will tell you that EEPROM length on at mega 328p is 1024 and it's writing the entire length of the EEPROM and finally it will start reading it. So if you see that uh, on the last time, which is the 10th time, it actually stopped at midway. And if you sort of take the output and see the number of characters in the text editor, you will see that it is only 1023 times, which is basically uh, the length of the EEPROM. This time, let's try the SAMD21 board. For this, we are gonna use a flash storage API because SAMD21 does not come with EEPROM, but the flash storage has a lot more storage than uh, Arduino Uno. Why don't we go ahead and just uh, copy the entire paragraph, or maybe two paragraphs. I'm gonna come to the .h file and just make sure that I don't have any double quotes so that's a lot more text than what I tried to do with at Mega328P. So the flash storage API is slightly different. Uh, it, you will have to define a struct and uh, then you can basically use a flash storage dot write and we are gonna read it once again. So let's see how that works. So let me flash in the software. And as you can see that only 9% of the program space is being used and it uh, flashed in successfully, so let me connect. So there you go, it just wrote the entire text in the flash and it just read it out. It's really, really a lot more storage than Arduino Uno. So once again, if your project requires a lot more space, a lot more non-volatile memory, then you can consider using SAMD21. For the next feature, I really, really wanted to use Web USB API so that I can have some information exchange between the microcontroller and some information from the browser on a laptop. Very useful if we want to have some kind of user configuration. So Web USB API is uh, really, really new. And uh, if we go to caniuse.com and check the browser compatibility, we will see that uh, Chrome has a good support and uh, not so much other browsers. Well, uh, this could be useful if uh, you are uh, just using Chrome to do some user configuration. This is on the browser side of the code. On the Arduino side, there is a library web USB Arduino that can be flashed onto the microcontroller so that we can do the data exchange. So for now in my computer, I have plugged in the Arduino Uno board. And when I come to the browser, I am using the web uh, USB API. So let me try to connect to it. So uh, I'm just flashing a blinky LED on the Arduino Uno. So you can see that it does detect as Uno R3. And let me try to connect to it. And uh, it will give you the device information, but uh, there will be some error. So the Arduino firmware side of things, I will be flashing in a very, very simple uh, firmware, just uh, below 20 lines. In the setup, I will be starting the web USB serial, just like how I would start the serial. And in the loop, I will be writing a message, hello world to the browser, which should be seen on the browser and then basically flushing it every two seconds. So when we try to do that for at mega 328p, it will say that web USB requires a board that supports USB client device mode, which means this board is not compatible with web USB. 
In fact, if we go to the web USB repository on GitHub and we go to the compatible hardware section, we will see all the Arduinos listed here. So why don't we try Arduino Zero, which has the SAM D21. So let me come back to the browser side once again. And after I have plugged in the Arduino Zero, let me try to connect to the device. And here you see Arduino M0. So let's connect to it. And there you see connecting to M0. And it says uh, interface number not supported by the device because we have not yet flashed in the firmware. So why don't we do it? Uh, so exactly the same firmware as what I was trying to do for Atmega328. So all it's trying to do is every two seconds is trying to write the message hello world to the browser every two seconds. That's it. So let me upload this firmware and we see that it is successful. So why don't we go ahead and connect to the device once again. But this time, hey, look, we see hello world to the browser, which is coming from the firmware. And uh, there will be an increment counter here every two seconds. That's because that's exactly what our firmware says. I will not go too much into the HTML. Maybe I require a separate video all by itself to explain the browser code as well as the firmware. But web USB uh, is supported on the SAM D21 microcontroller board. And if you are interested in using uh, this kind of data exchange from browser to the microcontroller and vice versa, this could be a really, really cool uh, firmware to use on the board. For the last feature, I wanted the microcontroller to wake up from deep sleep mode after a set period of time and sort of do something and go back to the deep sleep mode. For this, I realized that Arduino firmware actually has the low power library and uh, the GitHub repository is also found uh, under Arduino low power, which I used. Now, if we compare, uh, say, the Atmega chip first, we will see that it has uh, indeed different sleep modes. Now, I did not want an external interrupt, which is already possible on uh, Atmega 328P. I wanted an internal interrupt. So there will be some kind of timer running and then it will wake it up. This is also possible on Atmega 328P uh, while I was reading through the data sheet. And I realized that there is a watchdog timer and the timeout period for this is uh, 16 milliseconds to eight seconds. Now, I wanted the period to be a little bit longer and uh, that's what I found in SAMD21. If we go to the SAMD21 uh, data sheet, we will find uh, under the chapter RTC, real-time counter, it indeed has a 32-bit counter, and uh, which is typically clocked uh, in about uh, a kilohertz. More importantly, it can uh, have a long period. Uh, it does say here that the timeout periods can range up to 36 hours. So that was a perfect use case for my application. So I have uh, included the Arduino library and uh, in the setup, I'm just starting it. And in the loop, what it will do is it will call the API lowpower.sleep. And uh, this time I'm just setting it to 10 seconds, not an hour for the purpose of demo. And then it will wake up and just uh, blink about say 10 times. Why don't we try to flash this into the SAMD21 board? So let me compile and flash it in. You see that it is also acquiring the RTC0 library. And uh, let me go ahead and try to connect it. So you see the problem is I cannot find the port. That's because when it is sleeping for the 10 seconds, the uh, port is totally disabled because the entire microcontroller is in the sleep mode. So instead of using the USB to have the serial printouts, I'm going to use a UART to USB module and uh, try to have the serial prints on the UART ports. 
So let me show you how it looks like after the USB to UART chip is wired up to the board. Basically, I have three wires. One is the ground wire right here. And then uh, the two brown wires are TX and RX. That's it. So using the UART port, we should be able to see the serial prints right now. So this time we will go to our serial console and for the port we will choose the Scilabs USB to UART port and let's try to connect to it. Well, we will still not see anything. That's because if we come back to the serial API for Arduino and look at our zero board with SAMD21, we will see that the serial one is actually used for the UART ports. So why don't we go ahead and change all the serial to serial one. So I'm gonna replace all of them and there is one little serial here as well. So let's go ahead and flash the firmware again. And let's go ahead and uh, connect to the USB to UART port. And there you see it says awake. And if we quickly compare the firmware to what's being printed out, there you see it will go to sleep for about 10 seconds. And uh, it is awake once again, and it will basically blink 10 times and go to sleep. There you see it's going to sleep again for 10 seconds. So those were the three features that I found uh, different uh, between Atmega 328P versus SAMD21. Now there is no such thing as uh, one microcontroller is better than the other. It's all about our current use case for the current project. And uh, well, if you need uh, low power or more flash storage or even the web USB, the very experimental web USB, you can consider using SAMD21.